Hello and welcome to Fighters Only TV. I'm John Joel Regan and I'm here with Marshall Zelaznik, who is the newly minted president of UFC UK division and the managing director of international business. You're going to need a bigger business card. Yeah, yeah, definitely with that last name and all those titles, I could use uh, one that's more like an A4. <laughs> you recently got promoted to president of Europe. Somebody tried to stick on your head. Yeah, earlier someone called me the president of Europe. I said, all right, I'll take that. <laughs> one day, one day. Uh, we've not seen you for a while back in the UK. Any particular reason? Uh, well, I hear there's a fight in town, so I'm going to be part of that. But um, yeah, it has been a while. It's been too long, frankly. I think the, everyone in the company feels that way. It's, it's good to be back. What did we do wrong? Why did you leave us? Well, we didn't really leave you. <laughs> we just took a little break. Um, nothing. I mean, look, the fans came out to support this event. They continue to support all of our products. So um, this is long overdue, this event. This has, this has more to do with our, the challenges we have in getting our events put together for this market and other markets than it has to do with anything else. Um, speaking frankly, you know, we had, uh, when the UFC returned to the UK, we had UFC 70, 75, 80, 85, so on and so forth. Um, and they were very regular and now not so much. Has the UK market just not worked out? Is there no money in it? Or? Well, it's, it's, there's certainly money in it. Um, and it certainly has worked out. I think what's happened over time, so I joined the company back in 2006, and at the time, I think we were in about 35 countries and territories with television. So jump ahead now, we're in about 140 countries and territories with television. At the time I joined the company, the Zufa brand had only done one event internationally back in 2002 at the Brawl in the Hall. So I think what's happened is, and what the fans are feeling, is that our business is getting bigger internationally. And so we are trying to satisfy the demand of all of our fans, which means we have to take the event other places and so when we were back in 2007 with our three events here um, we weren't didn't have real traction in other international markets um, in so to speak I think we were probably always big in Australia we could have brought an event to Australia but the markets take a little time to work so this is nothing to do with the UK dropping as much as it has to do with some of the other international markets are growing and we need to feed them so, would you say it's something like um like in America, you've got the states, and the UFC might visit like you know uh, a state once per year. So Europe's kind of becoming like the states now. You visit like one country a year, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish we could be in Europe, you know, and more like we are in the U.S. But I think that's a fair way to look at it. Um, when you think about us doing the three events we did in 2007 and the support the fans gave us back then, is that would be like doing three events in Florida would be a challenge um, so we know the fans are here we know we can bring successful events here but what we're balancing is the other international business objectives we have that's what it really comes down to because there was a there was a plan floated I think a year ago or something of um, like sort of six fight night sort of style events in the UK a year but that's cause because you could sell a fight show out every weekend in the UK people get up at four o'clock in the morning to watch a fight outside the pub you know in this country <laughs> it's true yeah I do remember that and and so much of what we do isn't only dependent on us for instance we know we can bring an event here and to your point we can sell tickets and make a lot of money on the tickets but whether people realize it or not or the fans realize that these events are expensive to produce especially for television they're expensive to bring every Everyone over you know we take about 600 room nights just ourselves when we come in with the events in terms of all the production and people we bring so there the events are expensive and what we need to help support those events to make sure that we aren't just you know putting bringing sand to the beach is we need TV and so we're not in the business of giving away free programming and back in the day when we thought we would do six fight nights we anticipated a um, an investment from our TV partners not only here in the UK but around the world some of the partners were prepared to step up some weren't and at the end we just couldn't financially make them work so um, I hope one day we can get a European fight series launched or a fight night Europe. Um, these are some of the brands we're playing with within the companies, whether we can do these regional fights. Um, but, you know, the concern is we want to make sure that they are meaningful, important fights. and We're not doing fights for the sake of fights because we can do fights for the sake of fights, but that's not our business. So it wouldn't be like, um, like a second tier feeder league sort of event? I don't think that's in our business, no. I, th I think if we do fights, we want the fights 
like this to have real meaning within the hierarchy of the uh, fighters in the UFC. And if we were to do a regional fight series, it would be with fighters who can actually compete in any UFC event. That's the way we'd look at it. And it puts a lot of pressure on Joe and Sean Shelby to come up with the enough talent if we do that. And so that's always you know what we're balancing is trying to figure out, do we have enough fighters to do this series? Is there enough interest? Can we get the money from the TV? There's a lot of balls in the air. Plus, of course, you're, uh, you're regular event staff like Mike Goldberg and Joe Rogan and you know, a lot of pressure on them too, right? Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, we obviously we just um, signed John Anik, you know, who's with ESPN to help out because next year with um, our deal with Fox in the U.S., I think we're doing 32 live events. That's, you know, almost half the year. It is over half the year um, if you did one every weekend. Um, so it puts a big challenge on the staff. It puts a challenge on the talent. It puts a challenge on the fighters and the matchmaking. Um, it's going to be an interesting year for us, but a year we're up for the challenge. Uh, for, we got quite a lot of emails at Fighters Only saying that um, the UFC UK broadcast could probably use somebody with like a, a really strong Manchester accent. That's probably something you should start thinking about. Does his first name start with the letter J? Was that part of it as well? <laughs> Funny enough, it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I can see the wisdom in that, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Uh, Rumours, in your uh, capacity as Managing Director of International Business, we hear that Amsterdam is being looked at, uh, France is being looked at, and can you tell anything about uh, China? Um, well, France is a challenge right now because we can't bring the event there, but we're working with officials there to try and um, allow MMA events to take place there. Um, Amsterdam, we have great television exposure there right now for the Ultimate Fighter that's currently happening. We're trying to get some live fights on there. Um, that market, I don't see us doing an event next year um, there, but eventually that'll come because it's a big market, we think, for us. Uh, China's a bit of a slow burn right now. We just uh, did a deal with um, Guangdong TV, which is a big regional um, network. I watch that every night. Yeah. Not Longdong Huang, but um, so we've got Guangdong Television. We're also working on some other deals, which will give us the entire country. Um, but in terms of a live event, you know, we're looking at um, parts of Asia now, um, Southeast Asia, to bring an event. There's a good chance one could happen next year, but the markets next year that to really look for is obviously Brazil again, Australia will um, definitely be back. Um, Sweden, we're looking at uh, very strongly. Obviously, the UK is in our plans against next year. So, you know, we've got big international objectives next year, partly because we have all these fights that we're doing as part of our Fox obligation. So we have the ability to bring more fights around the world. All right, Marshal Zlaznik, thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you. Good to see you.